Hi. Now in this example I want to show you how we can use the remainder theorem to work out constants in a polynomial. And here's a typical kind of example you can expect to get. We've got when x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 1 is divided by x minus 1, the remainder is 3. And when divided by x plus 2, the remainder is minus 27. And what we've got to do is find out those constants a and b. Now to do this, what we do is use the remainder theorem up here and we're going to define this as our polynomial f of x. So first of all we just say let f of x be that polynomial. So we just say it's identical to x cubed plus ax squared plus bx minus 1. Now we've got that defined, if we're dividing this polynomial by x minus 1 and we're told the remainder is 3, then by the remainder theorem up here, if we were to work out f of 1, that's when this essentially equals 0, x would be 1, f of 1 would give us the remainder of 3. So we would say something like, since f of 1 equals 3, all we need to do now is just substitute 1 into here and we've got 1 cubed plus a times 1 plus b times 1 minus 1 and we're told that this value comes to 3 up here. Okay? So if we work this out, what have we got? We've got 1 cubed which is 1, take away 1, well that goes out and you've got a times 1 which is a b times 1 which is b, so you've got a plus b equals 3. a plus b equals 3. Now the thing is we cannot work out what a and b are at the moment from this one equation, so we just put it on hold and this means that we're going to have to get another equation with a's and b's in so we can do simultaneous equations. And where do we get that other equation from? Well this second fact here, that when this polynomial is divided by x plus 2, the remainder is minus 27. And so by the remainder theorem up here, we can see that if we were to let x plus 2 equal 0, x would equal minus 2. And that's the value we have to put in here. f of minus 2 gives that remainder of minus 27. So we can say that also f of minus 2 equals minus 27. And again, we stick minus 2 into here. This time, minus 2 all cubed is going to be minus 8. So we have minus 8. And then minus 2 squared is 4, so we have plus 4a. And then we have minus 2b. And then minus 1. And that equals minus 27. So we'll just come down here. If we tidy this up, we've got minus 8 minus 1 which is minus 9. If we add 9 to both sides we end up with 4a minus 2b equals minus 27 plus 9 which is minus 18. And noticing that we could divide each term by 2, we could thin it out. If we divide each term by 2 then we get 2a minus b equals minus 9. This is my second equation now, so we can just call that 2. And we can add together these two equations, because I can see that plus b and minus b will be eliminated. So if we say that 1 plus 2 gives, what do we get if we add those two together? Well, we've got 2a and a, so that's going to be 3a. And minus b and b, that's going to cancel to 0. And we've got minus 9 and 3, that's going to give minus 6. So if we divide both sides by 3, we end up with a equaling minus 2. Now that we've got a equaling minus 2, all we need to do is just sub this value, sub a equals minus 2, into either 1 or 2. We'll sub it into 1, into 1. And so what's that going to give us? Well, if we sub it into 1, we've got minus 2 plus b equals 3. So therefore, minus 2 plus b equals 3. 
add 2 to both sides and we end up with therefore b equaling 3 plus 2 which is 5. So we've got our results then. So at the end of the day just summarise therefore a is minus 2 and b equals 5. Alright.